Hey everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And it's the end of the day, and I've got a whole refrigerator full of squash. Usually, because today is a Friday, I would be making a pizza, but we decided that we actually felt more like what we call our squash pasta tonight. So, let me show you how we do this. Now, several years ago, I want to say five or six maybe, uh, it became very fashionable to spiralize your vegetables. And I heard about people using things like zucchini and other vegetables to create a pasta substitute. And I thought, wow, that'd be kind of cool. But when I looked at the spiralizers, when I looked at the spiralizers, they were all really expensive, like $150, $200. And I'm like, I don't even know if we're going to like this or not. So why would I buy something and then maybe we don't like it? So what I did find finally is I found a small one on sale. And it works the same way as the attachments on some of the like uh, KitchenAid mixers and stuff do, where you have basically a way to turn, you, you stick your veggie in here, you've got a blade of some sort on, the, on this end, and it'll have different size things. So this just creates like a strip as wide as your vegetable is, and then this creates like a wide noodle and then this creates a, a finer noodle almost a spaghetti and we use this for all those years we decided we loved the whole process and I don't know how much I spent on this it wasn't a lot uh, who made this chef chef and chef and C H E F apostrophe N chef and <laughs> anyway uh, I don't get anything from Shepherd. Anyway, we were pretty pleased with it. It did work, but in the last year, we had the opportunity to catch a fancy schmancy professional level one on sale. And I said, you know, we do this enough. It's worth it. So this just makes the process a lot faster. The other one, you have to stick your veg in there and you do this. <laughs> and to be honest, your wrist can get pretty tired twisting that thing. So this, you've actually got a, a handle on. But it does the same sort of a thing. You've got different teeth that can stick up. This is the widest noodle sort of thing. And we really like that size, so I'm going to stick with it. Now, what I have in preparation for this is I have one of our onions, which is a candy onion, which we harvested earlier this summer. Now, if you don't like onions, you don't have to cook with onions. We just happen to like an onion added to our fake pasta. <laughs> it gives it a little bit more flavor. And I am being totally attacked by flies. Let's see if we can kill some of these guys. <sighs> We've been having a major fly problem today. Let's see. There's one. <laughs> Anybody else want to risk it? <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, Julia Child never had flies in the studio, I'm convinced. But it, all it takes is a cat or dogs taking that extra bit of time to come in and out, and you're full of flies. And right now, we're full of something even weirder. We're full of cucumber beetles. Um, I woke up this morning and came in the kitchen, and there were like 50 cucumber beetles on the inside of the door going, let me out. And I'm like, no, so I smashed them all, of course. And I still just killed another 20 in the dining room just about 10 minutes ago. They zoom in when the dogs and cats are wandering around and yeah, kind of a pain. But the nice thing about it is they're not on my plants if they're in my house. So, and they're very easy, relatively speaking, to squash. It's not like a fly. They're not clever like flies are. 
they're just annoying. <laughs> so all I'm doing is getting off the outside, the brown outside of this. I want to make sure I have all the brown outside off because I hate brown outside on <laughs> skin in my onions. Uh, and you can cut it up however you want to. Like I say, we happen to like onions as part of our thing. Uh, if you prefer garlic, if you prefer nothing, these squash, sometimes I don't put garlic in, I mean onions in. The, the squash by themselves, if you do it the way we do it, will actually get a little bit of browning on it. And it's the browning that really gives it the flavor. Squash is extremely mild, especially this type. So it's, it doesn't have a huge humongous amount of flavor to it and browning it just a little bit gives it that flavor that's why you'll see people doing things like grilling them on the barbecue and this and that and the other thing you're using them as a carrier for flavors the same way as you would use chips as a carrier for flavors so you know i used to make i used to make uh zucchini lasagna all that kind of stuff Now, some light olive oil. A generous glug, as they say. And we'll get this started. And I'm just going to sweat these down. I may brown them a little, but I want to make sure they don't burn because I do not like the flavor of burned onions. They become bitter. And these are a sweet onion, so it doesn't make any sense to ruin them. Trash. Okay, now to use my spiralizer, what I do is I take off the blossom end. I measure this because unfortunately, these things are never big enough to actually hold the <laughs> vegetables that you want to use. They always seem to be like that extra little bit less <laughs> than what will fit in there. So I stick it in there like that. I've stuck this onto a little post that's there. Squish that in like that. And then I spin it around. One of the things I don't like about any of these spiralizers that I've tried, you see what I mean about ooh, curly cues? is that they leave a piece that you can't use. So sometimes I'll just save those aside and at the end I'll sort of chop them up and throw them in. But what you wind up with is these spirally, squirrely things here. And I am going to make like a zillion pounds of them. Now the reason I'm gonna make a zillion pounds of them is because they're going to shrink incredibly. So. I'm using the largest frying pan I have without going to my commercial size. And I will fill that all the way up. We'll have some leftovers probably, but not a lot. Now I just did the ultimate cheat here. What I did was <laughs> I didn't cut off the stem of the plant, the fruit. I, I just saved it aside. And that means I was able to stop spinning before I got to that and not have to uh, do anything elaborate and I was able to get really close to the stem in terms of using it all up. I prefer to use it all up. I don't like that wasted stuff. <laughs> okay. It takes a little practice to get this guy stuffed in there. But once you've got him, one of the things I like about candy onions is they're not a, they're a sweet onion, like uh, any of the fancy sweet onions you'd buy in the grocery store for a zillion dollars a pound these days, except we grew them here, so they're organic, <laughs> because we don't put anything yucky on ours. One of those advantages to growing your own is you know exactly what went into the process. We really like sweet onions. Um, we tried a new kind this year, Duster, and we've been pretty pleased with that too. So I'm going to keep up this process here, and I'm going to create a bazillion piles. I'm using up all my golden zucchini first, and then I'm going to um, 
do some regular zucchini and that will give me a two color pasta sort of thing. Kind of like when you buy pasta that's multiple colors, it's kind of fun. And there is a slight difference in flavor between the green zucchini and the yellow zucchini, so. Now, could you do this other ways? I'm sure you could probably slice it somehow. Um, we just really like the way this works out. Something about the spirally, curly cue-ishness of it. Seems to make it cooler. Now you will get a central core in these things. Let me show you one here. <laughs> it's just the very center of the zucchini thing that doesn't spiralize. It's kind of like when you use a spiralizer on an apple. It, uh, it leaves that center core. In a pro kitchen, all these scraps would go into a uh, soup or something, like a veggie soup. It's the first year we've ever grown yellow zucchini, and we actually really like it. And it does have a slightly different flavor than regular zucchini does. I wouldn't say I like it better, but I like it different. <laughs> Best way to put it. I've got quite a bit in there. Let's see what else we have here. There are a couple of little ones. The really little ones don't spiralize well. Oh, there's a bigger one. You can see I've got a decent quantity in there right now, but that's still, it's going to shrink down a lot because squash has a lot of water in it. If you do have a stem on it, make sure that you cut your stem square, otherwise your spiralizer will be confused no matter which one, what kind you have. You could probably also do this using KitchenAid attachments that we have for making like coleslaw and stuff like that. Last time I made this, we had it for dinner and I think we had it for lunch the next day. There's a leftover. Just we used it as a side dish. We kind of did it as a main dish for dinner. And you can do anything you want to with this. You can add tomato sauce to it. Uh, I usually put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on it. I actually have some tomato sauce that's open right now that's our sauce. So if Henry wants some sauce, he can have some. Now I want my pan hot. I'm cranking it up. I'm moving my onions over to the side because I don't want to uh, overcook them. And you could even take them out if you were concerned about burning them. I know from experience that I can just push them over to the side and they'll be fine. But I'm going to get this pan good and hot, and then I'm going to put this in here. I can hear that starting to sizzle. Sizzle, sizzle. Want it good and hot. Now the longest part of this process is definitely actually the spiralizer part. <laughs> I'm cooking this fairly warm. It's not up to uh, higher or anything like that because this is a commercial stove. I don't want to incinerate it. But I do want to boil off the water quickly because I want these vegetables to naturally sear and caramelize and all that kind of good stuff. I'm actually going to toss the onions that are on the bottom in this corner here on the top. Exactly what you use in this is totally your own taste. We like the onion. Sometimes we cook it without the onion because Jack obviously can't eat it if it's got onion in it. You can substitute garlic. Just be really careful not to burn the garlic. Because if you think onion gets bitter when it gets burned, garlic is twice as bad, at least. I'm starting to get some browning. Now I'm not frying this. 
There, this is a non-stick pan. There was some oil in there that I used for frying the uh, onions. But I don't, there's no layer of oil on the bottom of this. Now we have some nice browning on here. I think you could probably see that. And we're just about done. You can cook it as soft as you like it. We tend to leave a little bit of texture to it. And we're just going to serve this probably with some Parmesan. Henry, would you like some tomato sauce on yours tonight? Okay, he's going to stick with the Parmesan. We actually have some very nice Parmesan that I got at the grocery store the other day that's shaved. Good Parmigiano Reggiano. Good stuff. And that's it. You could add other vegetables. You could add like peppers, red peppers. You could make a spicy, chipotle, sauces, all kinds of other things. This is the simplest version. Well, not the simplest. The very simplest is just plain cooking the, <laughs> the, uh, um, the squash by themselves. And then we've added, in this case, also the, uh, the onions. But you can add whatever your heart desires. It's a great way to create kind of a mishmash of vegetables for dinner. Try cooking up something like this at your place. It's a great way to help clean out the fridge. These are all really good squash. The quality was good. It was just that they were sitting there and I could, we could only eat them so fast. But when you do a massive pile like this, that's how you really knock them down. And that's exactly what we needed to do tonight. So be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because obviously we're going to be doing lots more. I have a ton of cucumbers in the refrigerator. The other day I shared how to do sonomono and the uh, dill salad. I also have a Mediterranean style salad and uh, I'll be doing some pickles too soon. So yeah, until then. So bye.